Berlin. Good day, everybody, and uh, welcome to our post session about the intra LMS. And I'm so glad that you could take the time out to be with us for this. It's such an important aspect um, of what we offer our licensees, and we really feel that. Uh, Maybe uh, some licensees are not aware um, of this amazing income generating opportunity that's available to them. So we really want to take some time out and we're very lucky to have with us the rest of our tech support team. So they'll be introducing themselves a little bit later. Um, but just to introduce Divan Joubert um, and also Marius Duplessis. So Divan Joubert actually works for a different company, but today he's representing Encino and Prime Learning. And of course, you know myself, Penny Jones. I'm the co-director and co-founder of Intraset, um, otherwise known as Money Penny. So this is a subject very dear to my heart because I really do feel that if you master um, your online platform opportunities, you definitely, definitely are going to make a lot more money for your business. So just by way of introduction, why offer online courses? And I've left that blank. There's a uh, customizable brochure that we make available to all of our licensees, and you're welcome to put your logos in and to customize it according to maybe some additional ideas that you have. Um, but when you are speaking to your clients and marketing and selling these online courses, you need to know what you're talking about. And first and foremost, it's all about legal compliance. Um, your employers, typical employers, they have to uh, comply with certain regulations, et cetera, um, and make sure that they're keeping their employees safe. And these, these are a whole range of courses that are easy to access, um, and they can do a whole lot of tick box in terms of their legal compliance training. So it's incredibly important to your clients. Um, benefits of e-learning, I think probably one of the most important is the time saving aspect. So instead of having to pull all of the employees out of the workforce um, for one day, two days, or three day courses, um, they would be able to do their own courses in their own time. Um, as long as they are computer literate and can just click a mouse, they can take themselves through this course, um, obviously able to read a course, um, and uh, basically, um, instill the knowledge that is within each of these courses and the knowledge is going to be tested um, by a simple test at the end of each uh, course, which is the multiple choice, um, and then they can download their own certificates. So there's uh, several advantages to having e-learning courses available for your clients. Um, the quality is the intra quality um, and we're super grateful to Devon for having helped us initially uh, put these courses together in an online format, a scoring format that was um, uh, easy to apply to the LMS platform. Um, and what we do with our licensees is we give you access to all 15 of these non-credit bearing courses. Uh, so that number one, Ken is always very big on this, that you have better content uh, orientation in terms of the most popular courses, um, and also that you can collect a Hasman certificate for successful completion of all 15 courses, and Hasman is a trademarked um, qualification that Intra is working towards as we accumulate different uh, important courses for your health and safety training. So here are the 15 courses that we have online at the moment. Uh, we have obviously um, several more that we want to add during the course of the year, um, and then you would have access to all of these. It is important to note that for new licensees, we give you a 30 day access uh, to do these courses. If you want an extension, you just let me know um, and we'll organize an extension for you, um, but your access will be uh, deleted after a certain amount of time. So for those of you that are old licensees maybe, and you want to actually go back and do your Hasman, please remember that you won't have access at the moment. You'll need to just contact me to let, let you have access once again. Um, and it's a really great idea that you go through these courses, not only from the content knowledge point of view, but also so that you personally understand the processes involved um, and what your learners are going to be going through. Uh, we really do recommend that sometimes when you're putting learners on these courses, that you just arrange a short Zoom um, with them or a short face-to-face -face if you happen to be close by to wherever they are, 
um, just explaining the processes, et cetera. And Devon's going to explain um, those processes to you in a little while. So it's also great for you in terms of just creating your health and safety files and uh, assisting your clients be uh, legally compliant because there will be a certificate of completion that the learners will be able to download after each of the courses. Um, it's also possible to pull reports so that you can actually see that they did in fact log on. Um, are they 20% through, 50% through, 90% completed, et cetera? And you can follow up and uh, find out if someone is actually stuck in some kind of a roadblock, you can help them through that roadblock. And of course, the, I think one of the biggest issues for any businesses right now is uh, cost cutting, how to be more effective with the current budgets that are available. Um, and having an online capacity is, is a huge element in saving costs for any company. And it's also a huge element for saving costs for a small training providers, um, because instead of you having to travel, you know, maybe however many kilometers to a different geographical venue in order to train five learners, um, you could have two learners in one province, three learners in another province, 10 learners in another province, 20 learners in another province, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's going to save you so much in terms of your travel costs, accommodation costs, those kind of things, but you're still completing the requirements on behalf of your client and you're able to make sure that they are tick boxing all of those legal compliance courses. So let's talk about money, my favorite subject. The first option that we give our licensees, especially for smaller licensees, and if you don't have the resources or the capacity right now to put your own LMS platform together, we offer you the opportunity to share with Intra. Um, so you, we offer you a 50% profit share. You retain your own relationship with your own client and you will sell first sell and market these courses to your client. You will invoice your client and you'll fill out the data form that we typically send out to you. Um, which is going to give us essential information. And this is very, very important, and I cannot stress this enough. We really need this data form to be filled out accurately. So it's their first name and surname that they wish to have on their certificates. This is now we're talking about the individual learners. It's their ID number, or if, in, if they're not a South African citizen, it would be their passport number. And it's a unique email address. It must be a unique email address. And the email address is also their username. So the username and the email address would be exactly the same. It's very important. Um, you can imagine the number of um, learners, et cetera, that we would need to onboard. Um, if you've got 20, 50, 100, or 200 learners that you're sending to us, um, a big part of your activity is going to be making sure that that data form is accurate and that you also indicate which courses which students are doing, or in some cases, some students are doing two or three courses. Maybe they're doing HASREP and they're doing HIRA, for example. Um, so that's very important that we get the right information. We will invoice you for 50%, which is typically 275 Rand per learner per course plus VAT. And you will charge your client probably in the region of 650. Um, if you're registered for VAT, you charge VAT on top of that. So you keeping um, a nice balance for yourself. You pay intra. We upload your learners onto the system and they will receive their own um, login details. And Devon's going to explain all about that and exactly how that works. Um, technical team is there to support you, but we do hope that if you take the time to go through this video, maybe a few times, go through the courses yourself, um, you will understand sufficient to make sure that we, we don't pick up uh, login queries um, or wrong email addresses or you know those kind of queries. Let's keep those to a minimum. Um, so the tech team can just help with anything that's truly significant. But I have to say the technical team, in my experience over the last couple of years, have just been amazing. Um, if ever they have um, opportunity to respond within a minute or two, they literally do that. If it's more difficult to respond immediately because they're in a meeting or something, um, it definitely will be during the course of that day. And um, so it's very, very responsive. And thank you so much to the technical team. Um, reports, are, reports are available, and this is uh, very, very helpful, and Deepon will explain a bit more about that. And then, as, um, as I said, learners can download their certificates upon successful completion of the test. So the 50% profit share is working very well. This is something that you can do immediately. 
um, and you have no additional costs, no additional monthly hosting fees um, or costs per learner, et cetera. All of those fees are covered for you by Intra. Um, so you can really go ahead and generate a lot of additional income. I've had licensees make an additional 10, 20 or thousand rands per month um, just by following this uh, functionality or this opportunity. Um, and we'd really like to encourage you to do the same. Now, for those of you that might be uh, slightly larger businesses or you've got more resources available and uh, you really want to take advantage of 100% of the profits, um, then there's another option that we've been working with Prime Learning to offer you. And this is that you would, uh, that you would indicate that to us, that you want to do a full um, LMS onboarding and we would send you an invoice for an intellectual property buyout so that you can use our training material online, which has been pre-prepared for you. So it's like a plug and play. Um, the online intra online course is then made available to you. You'll contract directly with Prime Learning and Morris is going to explain about the special offer that he has for our licensees. Um, and Prime Learning will charge you a monthly hosting fee and a small fee per learner per course. Um, but your first 100 learners in a month will be free, which is an amazing offer. And you'll get full technical support and so much more. And Morris is going to unpack just what all of that much more is um, as we go forward. So I'm going to hand over now to my colleague, uh, Divan Joubert. And Divan is going to take us through some of the practicalities um, of working uh, on this uh, LMS platform. Divan, over to you. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Penny. Thanks, um, Ben. Um, yeah, guys, like Penny alluded, I work for a company called RBI Technical Solutions. We are a food inspection authority. And this is where I started off with this whole um, LMS platform. I've been an affiliate with, with Ken and Penny for, I think, close to five, six years now. And what I've done is, because we're a large organization, we've got nine offices throughout the country. I was battling to find a way to, to deliver training to all our guys out in the field without, without me traveling up and down the, the, the country the whole time. And then also, if you have a look at your, your external training providers, they generally need five to eight, sometimes even 12 uh, learners to, to facilitate um, a specific firefighting training or whatever you, you require. So I entered the affiliate program and I also been in contact with with um, with Marius from Prime Learning and I decided to to integrate the, the two systems with one another. And that's when we started with the, the ELMS platform. So the reason why we did this is with our guys being out in the field, a, a lot of them work on cellular towers and whenever there's rain, they can't access these towers. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to have a look and see when the training expires so they have access to the platform and they can go and do the training without leaving the field, without um, traveling, like, uh, like Penny said, a tremendous amount of kilometers to wherever they need to attend the training. And then also you need to pay living out and, and all of those kind of things because generally these training um, courses happen over two to three days. So having a look at the convenience and practicality of the ELMS platform, that, that's just the one part. So the second part is obviously for training providers that wants to pro pro provide this service to an external client, we mainly use it internally. So, that, so the system is twofold. You either do it internally or you do it external to, to external customers or both if, if, you, if you wish. So that clearly you guys would understand the, the cost saving initiative behind this from traveling, living out, uh, loss of production. So it doesn't matter which way you look at it, there is a major cost saving um, on, on this. So that is, is point number one. Point number two, it's obviously less, less disruptive to your production. Like I said, you don't need to pull guys out from the field. You, um, what we do is we create a, a learner path. I will discuss it a little later on. So our guys out in the field knows they need to buy an X date, uh, finished up, three or four courses set out for them to that, that falls within their career path. So they know when they get to a site, they have access issues. It's raining. They can't, they can't carry on with their work. They can quickly sit in the bucky. They can start with their training so long. They can download the learner guides. They can go through the presentations and they can start familiarizing themselves with the training material. And then when they're ready, they can then sit and, and do the test. So the disruption on your, on your, on your production is far less than getting a team together, traveling out to wherever they need to do the training at, at an external provider's facility, and they're out of, out of circulation for two to three days. 
Um, this obviously also helps with the planning ahead. Like I said, we, we have a training matrix with upcoming expiring medic, uh, training, the, um, training certificates. So our guys now look in the next month or two, I have A, B, C, D training that's expiring. So whenever I get a gap, I need to do this training. You can perform the same, the same thing for your prospective clients. You can, in the back, in, on the back end, have a master training matrix with um, conditional formatting and showing you when the, the, the current certificate's expiring. So that's an additional service you can provide to your clients. Um, just as a heads up and also a, a return business um, from, from said clients. Uh, like I said, training can take place anywhere as long as you have connectivity. A mobile device, which is a laptop, a PC, um, tablet, doesn't matter what, as long as you've got a, um, an internet connection, you A for away, you can go. With, the, with your own ELMS, what we have done is we have continuously refresh or continuous refresh of training with our guys out in the field on technical aspects within the company. So you don't necessarily have to load only um, the training material that, that you get from Ken and, um, and Penny. But if you own your own ELMS, you have uh, works instructions, you have policies, you have procedures, all of those kind of things you can add to, to um, the ELMS. And what we're currently doing is, is for our guys out in the field, if you get a guy that needs to be performance managed, that you find that they are lacking in certain areas, you tell them, well, go and have a look at this video, look, have a look at this training sessions. We have weekly training sessions that we record, that we add to the, to the ELMS. And this all comes down to internal training and, and the betterment of, of your employees for those of you that wants to use it internally. Um, training on internal policies and procedures that goes hand in hand with the, with the previous point that I've, that I've discussed. And then uh, lastly, the, the career path that I, that I briefly touched on. If you have, a, say for instance, a supervisor within your organization, or you have a client that, that comes to you and say, well, I've got person A and B that I, I would like to make them supervisors. You create a career path on the LMS system and you tell them, well, they need to perform the risk assessor training, super track, um, HIRA, uh, a HIRA super track and legal compliance, for instance. And once they've completed those, you can then internally deem them as, as a supervisor, a qualified or a, I won't say a qualified, they have attended this training. So we issue them a certificate of attendance and you can you can easily show the, the, the reasonable man test that you have given them um, ample legal compliance training and you thereby with the experience and the training could de declare them competent to be the supervisor. You can go to the next slide, Penny. Okay, so this is basically once you once we we receive the information um, of learners you wanna you wanna load, obviously you will get the, the URL, which is plain and simple intrasafe.encino.co.za. And once you enter that, this is the, the landing page that you'll get. Next Penny. So here we go to, to the login page. And as uh, Penny alluded, guys, it's very, very important when you do the data sheet where we capture the personal information, which is the email addresses, the name, the surname, the email address is the most important factor in this whole thing. If there's a space or a misspelling or, or whatever the case may be, if, if the, the email address is not 100% correct, you will not receive the correspondence. And also, if you do get it by, by some other um, miracle, you will not be able to enter it because your email address won't be correct as the username. So please make sure that there's no um, errors and those unnecessary spaces and semicolons where there shouldn't be semicolons and so forth when you complete the, the data sheet piece. Next, Penny. Okay, so there's, um, with the initial login, when you get your login details, there's one or two um, scenarios you can follow. One, you can either provide the person with a predetermined um, password that they will obviously use the, the email as a username and the provided password. But once they log in, the system will then ask them to reset the password. I found this to be, I won't say challenging, but we do get difficulties from time to time where people copying and pasting the, the password incorrectly, um, typing it incorrectly, using lowercase when there should be an uppercase. So what we generally do is we, we go to the second option. We don't provide any predetermined password. They receive their username and they automatically just click on the last um, password tab there where the red arrow is and you follow the prompts. Next, Penny. 
So when you click the next after the last password uh, the link, you will get to, to this page. So there's two options. And this is another pitfall for, for a lot of the guys. When you have a look at the, the two options, there is I lost my username or I lost my password. So your username will always be your email address that, that you have provided. So the guys, whenever they, they lost their password, they need to select the second option where it says I lost my password they'd ask you to enter your username. So you put in your username, which is your email address, you click send, and you will receive a mail with a link to follow to reset your password. Next, Penny. So once you've reset your password and you manage to log in, this is the landing page that you will get. So all the courses that you've enrolled for or have been approved for will appear on, on this page. So there's at this stage, there is 15. It depends on which ones you, you enroll for. You will get access to only the ones you paid for or enrolled for. And for you to enter, you basically click that, that red little block that says enter. Next, Penny. So once you enter a course, I've just used the COVID-19 one as, as an example. You will, this is the page that you will see. So on the left-hand side is your, your, directive, your directory. So if you click on uh, the first one that says the, the course folder, the very first item that you'll see is terms and conditions. Now, guys and girls, this is where a lot of confusion comes in and we, we, we can't set it any simpler than what it is. The course has prerequisites. So you'll see the little lock by the second red arrow on the right-hand side. That means that you cannot proceed to this section until you've completed or accessed the section before that. So the first arrow on the top on the left hand side where it says terms and conditions you need to click on terms and conditions and read through it once you're done with that you click back and you proceed with the course if you've completed the previous prerequisite section which is terms and conditions you will see the lock will disappear next to the learner guide next penny so there you see the learner guide now has a little green arrow it means I've read through the instructions and I've gone through the learner guide. The learner guide I have now downloaded. So the learner guide, I will speak to you guys just about, uh, about just now. This is purely just to show you the sequence of events that needs to happen in order for people to, um, to access the, the material. So once you've done the section, the green arrow will appear and you're ready to go to the next section. Next, Penny. So the next section, we've done the learner guide. We are now under supporting documents. The supporting documents is the, um, well, I call it downloadable documents. So your learner guide and your, your supporting documents needs to be downloaded by the, the candidate. This is used for the candidate to make notes on and to use in conjunction with the, the training module, which is pretty much a PowerPoint presentation in SCORM format. And the SCORM format is just a fancy format for a PowerPoint presentation to run within a web browser. The reason we do that is so that people can you don't have any, everything is web-based. You don't need special applications. And I'll touch on the applications just now as well. You don't need any fancy um, gadgets to, to download or open up this material. It's played straightforward PDF documents that you can download and open on your device. And the training module basically runs as a PowerPoint presentation in web format. Next, Penny. Okay, so once you go into the training module, this is the SCORM package that I was talking about. So this is basically just a PowerPoint presentation. You guys will see bottom left-hand corner, it says slide one of, I think that's 213. It is very important that you don't skip any slide. So you click there where the red arrow is, you click on the next um, button, it'll take you to the next slide. And so you work through the slides um, until, you, until you are done. On the right-hand top, you will see there's a little tab that says notes. Um, it's not very oftenly used, but if you wanna make notes or circle something on the PowerPoint presentation, it allows you to do it with, with the notes section. Like I said, I haven't found anybody that really uses it because they make the notes on your learner guide, but at least you have the option to do so if you want. Uh, next, Penny. So there, by the, by the red arrow, you'll see an orange tick. So that orange tick means that the, the person has started the presentation, but there were slides that were skipped. So a lot of the time, the people click on the slide and not the next button, and they sometimes miss. That's why we advise the people to use the next button to make sure that the system systematically works through the slides and it registers that, you, um, that you've actually completed the slide. So once you've completed all the slides, like the previous point, the, the, little, error, uh, the little tick will turn green, and you will be able to proceed to the next stage. 
So just with regards to, to this PowerPoint presentation or the SCORM packages, when the guys are doing it on mobile devices, a lot of your Android devices ask you to download third-party software to view it. It is not necessary and, and it's, you should not do it because that, uh, that software doesn't recognize you when, you when you click next, 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 next. It doesn't pick up which slide has been completed. So it doesn't matter whether, you, whether you've accessed all the slides, your arrow is never going to turn green. That's why we always tell the people, please, it needs to be viewed in, in the native browser. Some of the native browsers have a bit of an issue. So we, we generally just use Google Chrome. We've never had any problems. I do the uploads. I do all the reports on the back end. Everything gets done through Google Chrome. So I use a MacBook Safari sometimes, uh, the, the native browser for, for the MacBook sometimes does give issues, but um, a lot of the times it does seem to work. But generally, Google Chrome is the best one to go for. Next, Penny. So once you've done through, you've gone through all the slides, you can now access the test. So each test will have this little information section. This one in particular says the test consists of 28 uh, marks. The required pass rate is 75%, and it gives you um, a, a little bit more detail. So there's 22 questions. All of the questions together is 28 marks. You need to maximum score. Uh, it gives you all the, de the detail in there. So it's just a basic rundown of what you need to do to, to pass the test. Next, Penny. Okay, so this is where you start the test. So once you enter the test, you can go backwards and forwards through the questions. So if you don't know the answer to each to, to the specific question, you can skip it and you can come back to it. But please note on the next to the arrow, there's a time limit. So there's a time limit set for each question. Um, when you skip the question, if, you, if you've used 10 seconds of the question and you've skipped it and you come back, you won't get the 10 seconds back. That 10 seconds is spent. You will, you'll have the, the remaining 50 seconds or whatever that was left. When you click next, you will still have that left to work through the question again. Each question is set on one page and you have to um, complete at least one answer per question before you can submit the test. Um, so you need to, before you can go to the next question, you need to submit the answer, either true or false in this case. But like I said, you can come back and alter your, your answer should you wish. Next, Penny. Once your test is completed and you have reached the pass, pass rate, you will, on the right-hand side of your browser, you'll see there's a little bell, bell icon, which is your notification area. And the certificate will then automatically be generated if you pass the test. And it will be in a PDF format loaded under your notification section. And then you can go up, you can download your certificate as many times as you wish. Um, and that is how the people then access the certificates. Um, with regards to the reporting, um, Penny, I haven't added the report because that's something we do in the background, but between Morris and myself, we can pull reports to say how many people have access, which courses, how far the people are. I think um, Penny mentioned it earlier. We can see percentage wise, you know, the, the, the person has completed 70%, 80%. We can go in and see which items they have accessed, how many times they've accessed it, the times, the time spans on the, on the access and all of those kind of things. So the report, it depends on if you have your own LMS, you will have access to that. If you have the 50%, uh, I think it's, it's um, down to between Marius and myself to, to pull those kind of reports for you. So that's all from my side, um, guys and girls. We'll have a Q&A a little later on. I think this pretty much sums it up in a nutshell. Looking forward to more to section. Thanks. Thank you, Devon. That was excellent. And um, now that Devon has completed like a practical um, explanation, uh, we're going to hand over to Marius to proceed from Prime Learning, who is going to introduce the bigger picture um, of what they offer at Prime Learning and how it can benefit you. So, Marius, over to you. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Penny. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Devon, thank you for the, the detailed uh, discussion and descriptions of what uh, what we have on the LMS and all the functions and functionality. There's a couple of things that I'll touch on again. Um, but thanks, Devon. It was a great, great section from you. Um, just a bit of background on Prime Learning. Um, we started Prime Learning as a division within the Prime Key group of companies uh, back in around 2009, 2010, uh, when we did a lot of projects for government, for the theaters, and that required us to manage uh, over 2,000 learners at a time. 
um, none of these systems that were available could actually cater for the unique uh, challenges that South Africa had, uh, especially with regards to theater and reporting to higher education and those kind of things. So we developed our own system from scratch, um, keeping in mind what's, what's needed by the various authorities. Uh, in 2019, we spun off uh, Prime Learning as its own company. Um, and Prime Learning is, uh, at the moment, it's the sole supplier of the Encino licenses uh, within southern, the Southern African region. Um, so any licenses uh, that are sold out on Encino is done through Prime Learning um, directly. We also um, have our own academy side. Uh, so we have our own QCTO accredited services um, and accredited programs on the LMS as well. And we also offer those kind of assistance to our clients as well when they need it. Um, so that's just a bit of a background on prime learning. Thanks, Penny. So on uh, your own LMS, a bit on uh, the Encino platform, what it's about. So um, you're welcome to go and have a look at the website as well, encino.co.za. It's a learner and learning management system. Um, and we've split all the functionalities into various modular sections uh, to allow clients to choose what they want um, so that they only, only pay for what they need. A lot of these systems that are available, um, and I'm typically international systems, you have to buy the entire system, whether you use 5% or whether you use 90%, um, you've got a system that, is, uh, that you have to manage uh, and support. The Encino platform is also a software as a service platform or a software as a service offering. And what that means is that we take care of all the hosting, we take care of all the support, the maintenance, all the system upgrades, all the backups. And um, so you as a, as a client only need to worry about running your business and getting your, your students on the system. Um, it's, a, it's always a bit of a challenge um, for a company specializing in a specific sector, especially things like training, to also start to look after IT systems as well. Um, and we believe that it's, uh, it's not the core business of any training company. So let's rather do those services or offer those services as part of our package. The modular functionality or the way that we've split it into the modules um, are typically the following sections. We've got an, an e-learning and blended learning section uh, or module, which means that you can run both fully e-learning e -learning capable programs. So a person logs onto the system and does everything on the system or a blended learning program where you actually mix it with classroom sessions and attendance records and all those kind of things. So the system caters for both those scenarios. scenarios. We also have an ebooks and e library section. So the ebooks are typically books that a student can read on his own time. And um, we've got various, we'll come to those sections, but we've got various subject, subjects uh, within our ebook section. And then the e library actually contains uh, some of our previously accredited course material um, that we also offer to our clients. So if, if clients are, for instance, interested in getting access to uh, course material, we've got a whole library of uh, previously accredited programs that are also available. Then uh, we also have, our, as I've mentioned, our own academy. So we host uh, various QCTO and CETA accredited qualifications and programs. And we offer that as a service to certain clients as well. So specific clients would like, um, say for instance, learnerships in management uh, management programs, and then they register with our academy and then uh, the learnerships run through, through that way. So that's a module that we also often offer to clients. And then of course, uh, Devan's mentioned the report engine. Um, as soon as you subscribe directly to uh, the Encino platform, you have access to the entire report engine, which allows you to do customized reports. Um, and the report engine also has the capability to export all of the information into an Excel format or into a CSV, which is a comma separated value format. Um, and those are typically the kind of formats that are required by the CETAs and QCTO or Department of Higher Education. And we'll get, get back to that a little later. Thanks, Penny. The next one. So uh, on your own LMS, the, the nice thing I think you, you guys noticed uh, when Devon uh, showed the presentation with regards to IntraSafe, the LMS it can be white labeled according to your brand and your logos. 
So uh, you present your entire business uh, through the LMS. Um, and it's the same logos and the same look and feel that uh, your clients are familiar with and that your students are familiar with. It is, uh, as Devon's also mentioned, it's fully web-based and it is mobile compliant. And that means that you don't need any additional software than a browser to run it. So you can run it in your browser on your phone. You can run it in your browser on your laptop or on your desktop computer. And we use a, an internet standard, the HTML5 standard, um, with the necessary tools to make sure that it runs both on a phone as well as on, on a desktop laptop uh, browser without having to, to write specific um, programs to handle that. Then um, it also, the, the LMS also gives you the functionality to manage your own programs and own courses and materials. That means that you can upload whatever additional material you want um, and you can then subscribe your students to that. And we've, we support various formats um, when you upload your material. Typically, uh, clients start off with the, the programs in PDF and HTML format, and they later on move over to the SCORM format, as Devon's also shown. Uh, the SCORM format, as he's rightly said, is uh, in typical terms, it's, a, it's PowerPoint for the internet. Um, and that gives you a bit more interactivity for your students uh, with things like voiceovers and videos and all those kind of things integrated as well. We have uh, intelligent course routing, and that means that within the course, you can, of course, set your prerequisites, as Devon has mentioned, but you can also set prerequisites, prerequisites outside of the course. So say, for instance, um, we require you to do a basic introduction before you have access to HIRO. Um, it, uh, the system will automatically give the student the first course to do, and then when he passes that course, he's got access to HIRA, for instance. So we can do those kind of routings uh, within the system as well. And that's a very nice function, especially when you start looking at things like a, an entire curricula that you want to offer to your clients. So a program that consists of multiple courses and the one course following on a previous one. Um, so that's, uh, that functionality is included within the system as well. Then, as I've mentioned, within the blended or the classroom um, training environment, uh, we've got classroom and venue management. So typically, when you do need to have things like attendance registers and manage your classrooms, the functionality is already included within the system. Uh, that also makes sure that none of your other facilitators uh, can overbook a classroom or book a classroom that you've booked. Um, so you can manage your entire training site as well. Then, of course, the main thing is complete user and student management. And from user and student management, you've got the reporting section that um, also focuses on all of the interactions that the students um, have within the system. Um, and then as soon as they are done and completed the course successfully, uh, you've got the report, uh, report, or oh, sorry, the certificate platform. So the certificate platform issues a certificate on a successful completion of a course. You also have the, the um, capability to put things in uh, with regards to the reporting, uh, with regards to the certificates, put uh, values in to delay certificates to only be handled or only be issued after a certain amount of time. And that's typical, typically issued or typically used in an environment where you make use of um, a blended learning approach where you also have a supervisor to check what the learner has done. So you'll typically have a day that the uh, learner needs to present the work that he's learned in front of a supervisor or in front of an assessor, and that assessor will then approve um, that learner and then the system will issue the report or the certificate after that. Thanks, Penny. So the offer that we that we're giving to all the affiliates, um, and you guys, you guys will see if you browse on on the uh, internet on the Encino platform, this is a specific affiliate only offer um, where we give the system to the affiliates at a fixed rate of four thousand four hundred and fifty rand. That includes a hundred user licenses. Um, so a hundred user active user licenses per month is included in that price uh, in that monthly price. Typically, if you subscribe to the base module, so module one 
um, within the system, which gives you access to the base platform. Uh, that would cost you, <clears throat> sorry, around 4,700 Rand, but you also need to pay 45 Rand per user. Um, so if you make the calculation um, on 100 users, you're saving around 50% um on this uh, on this deal so you never have to pay any additional user licenses uh, until you go over the 100th mark um, this also gives you access to the full learner administration and management it gives you access to upload all of your own material if you require if you want to create new courses you've got that capability you can create your various online assessments and tests uh, do all the testing um, and then put in the conditions to also issue the certificates after the completion of those tests or of those programs. Um, and then, of course, any of the material that is supported, things like video uploads, documents, PDFs, score material, you can upload all of those type of documents. We have a, um, a security limitation where we stop people to upload um, things like Excel sheets. Uh, because Excel may contain scripts. So when a person uploads a typical, um, let's call it a typical office program or office uh, document or Excel sheet, the system automatically scans those, uh, those documents for embedded scripts, um, and it would then block them uh, to make sure that there's no, no issue with regards to security or uh, illegal access or anything like that. So we, we take care of the security side as well. Um, and then, of course, you've got access to your own report engine to customize your own reports um, and uh, be able to put a report at any time. In addition to the base platform, we also give you access to the full ebooks library. So, all of the ebooks that is on the system, which is usually sold at, at an additional 45 Rand per learner, um, this is also included within uh, the affiliate program. Uh, and this means that you can you can also use these ebooks for clients or for yourself um, to give your learners an additional support and additional let's call it professional development where they've got the capability to go through any of these topics whether it's accounting whether it's marketing whether it's IT uh, go through these topics and uh, go through the, uh, the ebooks that are available on the system. Um, we also then take special requests if there's specific ebooks that you would like us to extend or specific topics that we you'd like us to expend, uh, extend and uh, through our international partnership, we can then go and source those material as well. So if you have a client specifically looking for a specific subject matter, we can also expand that um, within the ebook section. Thanks, Benny. The optional extras within the Encino uh, affiliate program. Uh, we also offer you the, uh, the your own subdomain and white labeling. Um, as as Devon's demonstrated, uh, the Intrasafe Encino platform is specifically white loaded, uh, white white labeled for Intrasafe with all of the logos and color schemes. So we can typically do that for any client. Um, so for instance, with Devon uh, and RBI. They've got rbi.encino.co.za, and that uh, that entire platform or that entire experience is uh, white labeled with, with their logos and color schemes. Uh, that's a once-off uh, value that you that you just have to pay, and it's uh, just because we need to create the templates. Um, so that's a once-off that we do. Then um, to assist with user uploads, creation, and administration, if for instance you have a very high load of new users coming in. Uh, you've got a client that, for instance, asks you to manage a thousand learners. Uh, you can also uh, outsource that to us. We charge you once of 12 rand 50 per user that we help to upload uh, for that month. Um, we also do SCORM program conversion. Uh, so, typically, what that means is if you have your own training material and you would like us. Uh, or you would like to get that converted into a SCORM format, we can do that for you at a fixed rate um, of uh, 4,400 Rand. Um, and that's typically, um, to give you an idea of the market, uh, market rate, if you do development in SCORM or ask a, a company to do SCORM development, so they'll typically charge you anything between 25 uh, and 35,000 Rand per, per course. Uh, so this is typically only to our um, affiliates uh, that we offer this as well. 
And then of course we can do uh, customized course material development um, on request. So if there's a specific subject matter that you would like us to, to research and develop, we can do that as well. Uh, we actually have a couple of clients that uh, only focus on that where we develop programs for them. Thanks, Penny. So the practicality, um, as Penny has mentioned as well, if you choose option two, you have a direct contract with Prime Learning um, that includes all of the hosting, maintenance, updates, everything within that single package. So there's no extra additional fees. Um, you've got the fixed monthly fee and that's it. Only if you go above 100 users, active users in the month, will we charge 45 Rand for each extra user. And that gives you a nice idea to also how you can also build your own pricing structures uh, into your courses. So you know if you're going to do a mass intake, you can just add 45 Rand per user onto that and uh, your co costs are covered. Um, the, uh, when, you, when you go for option two, as Penny uh, has mentioned and as Devon's mentioned as well, if you go for the option two, you already have access to the intro material that is loaded on the Encino platform. Um, you also then have the ability to learn, uh, load all of your own material and courses. Uh, there's no additional cost to that. Um, it's part of the package. So we don't charge per course uh, that you load onto the system. And then, of course, you've got access, direct access to the Prime Learning support channel with personnel and content developers and uh, our engineers. If you see that there's some system issues, uh, you've got direct access to us as well. Thanks, Penny. So uh, the, uh, the discussions that we previously had um, is to say that uh, you shouldn't just look at a cost to any system. A system should always have a value assigned to it. Um, and the value of the Encino platform is that you, as soon as you are registered as an affiliate, you can also go and resell the Encino platform to your clients. And by reselling it to your clients, because you're an affiliate, they, they also have the ability to sign up for the affiliate program. So they can get it at a fixed rate um, of that 4,450 Rand. You automatically get 1,050 Rand per client per month back. So there's a standard commission included within that affiliate program. So all of a sudden now, the system is starting to generate money for you instead of it being a cost uh, to your business. Um, as Devon's also mentioned, a lot of our clients, and this is just a bit of guidance on the selling process, a lot of our clients, especially within the mining and the health industry, use the system for policy and, and procedure education as well. So they will typically load their policies and procedures onto the system as well with a couple of uh, assessments followed, following that. And that is a way for them to easily track um, their own staff going through the policies and procedures and actually knowing what is expected from them. So especially in an environment like the mining environment or like a client that is, that is ISO accredited in any of the ISO standards, the system then follows or tracks each, uh, each student or each employee as they actually go through policies and procedures. And then of course, all of the, the bigger clients, um, if you start looking at things like workplace skills plans on the internal, uh, internal spend, they also use the system to track the internal training. So although it's not accredited training, the system is able to track any kind of training that you've got on, the, on uh, loaded onto it. And that then automatically uh, exports into a CSV file that you can import into your HR and payroll systems to actually track those workplace skills, uh, workplace skills plans. Um, so it gives you a value that you can already sell onto your client as well. Um, any additional users that the client then registers over their 100 mark, you get 10 Rand back for that additional user as well. So it's just a bit of a, an extra give back uh, to you guys as affiliates. Thanks, Penny, the next one. So the last, uh, last thing that I'd just like to focus on or just like to uh, discuss is the, the benefits that the Encino platform also offers you. Um, because we've got our own academy and we have various of our, of our network partners that are also training providers, Encino has already been presented at QCTO and at Department of Higher Education. And they are also already familiar with uh, Encino as part of your quality management system. 
uh, because you are able to track students, the, you know, the entire flow of a student through the course, and it is exported into the correct formats. Um, it is, it's very easy to get uh, your QMS or much easier to get your QMS accredited um, with Department of Higher Education and the QCTO. We are in discussions with QCTO for direct integration, which looks very promising. Um, so that is also a nice thing to keep in mind um, that you don't have to now look for custom developed uh, integrations to, uh, to manage your LMS with regards to the QCTO and Department of Higher Education. Um, the other, other nice feature that we've got, because we can customize the reports, we can also customize it to such an end that it exports automatically into your HR and payroll system so that your relevant reports back to SARS uh, or the Department of Labor, Department of Employment and Labor, uh, is automatically handled through your HR systems, which have been integrated into Encina. So that's a very nice feature to also include or also keep in mind when you are um, using the system or when you are selling the system through a client. So those are just some of the benefits. Um, I think that's about it, Penny, um, back to you, thank you. That was excellent. Thank you so much. So thank you, especially to Devon Gilbert for making his valuable time available. And of course, to Mario Spufasi for making his valuable time available. Thank you so much. Thank you for Ken in the background who has um, handled all the technical aspects of the Zoom today. I'm super grateful. Thank you for that. Um, so at the end of the day, we just would love to know your interest. Would love you to WhatsApp me. Um, as you know, my WhatsApp number uh, plus two seven eight two nine two zero eight one seven zero, or email me on penny at show.co.za. Let me know whether you want to be reactivated for the Hasman, for example, um, so that you can try the courses for yourself. Um, any and all, you you want a copy of the brochure again? You want a copy of the data sheet? I can resend you all of that information. Um, for those of you that feel that option two would be a better solution for you, um, absolutely let me know and I'll make sure that those uh, contacts and referrals are done. Um, so once again, thank you everybody for attending. I'm going to ask uh, Devon to stop the recording so that we can enter into our Q&A section for today.